Hey, what's up, YouTube? Ronix with that an outro, and in this tutorial, I'll show you guys the best way to choose the radius of your screen retouching using frequency passion in Photoshop. So, this is the best way to choose your Gaussian blur radius for screen retouching in Photoshop so that you can retain the textures and details in your images the most natural way. And this is going to be like an easy to understand tutorial. However, I'm going to be showing you guys the details and everything you need to know and if i told you guys use an action you have to know the reason as to why your action stops playing at a given area so that you can put in that radius and that radius is basically going to be determining the amount of skin textures that you're going to be re remaining with in your overall image so usually for skin retouching we always have to first of all clean up the image i'm just going to hit command j or Control J to clean up the image. So I'm going to come to my spot healing brush tool. I'm just going to simply uh, clean up uh, these uh, blemishes or remove these blemishes from uh, this image. And when I'm done doing so, we're going to get into the details of uh, skin retouching and understanding why a uh, frequency separation group is created in a given way and the type of images that work well with a uh, given frequency separation settings so i think i'm done cleaning up the image so here we are right now so during frequency separation we always have to divide the image into two so skin retouching first of all is more of evening out the skin tones or making the skin tones of an image even so that they can have nice skin tone transitions and that create that uniformity so that uniformity is more or is what we refer as a retouching in photoshop so frequency passion divides the image into two so it is going to divide the image into uh, the high frequency and the low frequency the high frequency is going to be containing the colors and the skin tones and the low frequency is going to be containing the textures in the image so i'm going to simply hit Ctrl or command j since i had already created another layer on top of the background layer and i'm going to name this low frequency i'm sorry about my spelling so i'm just going to rename that low frequency and i'm going to name this upper layer high frequency like that so what i'm basically going to do I'm going to select the low frequency layer. I just want to show you guys the details and the basics and why your frequency passion action, if at all you have one, does what you really see or creates those groups for you. So we're going to select the low frequency layer and we're going to turn off or deactivate our high frequency layer by clicking on the eye icon right here. So when you select it on the low frequency layer, this is where you have to pay maximum attention. Come to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. So it is going to bring up this dialog box. So always make sure that your previous on. So we're going to move this towards a zero percent and get our zoom tool and we look for the area that seems to have more textures on the skin than the rest of uh, the skin area. So this is whereby we are going to be blurring out or removing the text, text, textures rather until we are completely comfortable or until these textures just we have to get that sweet spot until the textures are starting to get lost or disappear in the image. So you don't have to cram these digits because your images are going to be differing. First of all, the models are going to be having different skin textures. And the, secondly, the cameras that you're going to be using to shoot these images are also going to be differing. So you shouldn't cram this radius or these values. So you have to, depending on the images you have, you have to move this radius until the prominent textures start getting lost out of your image. So you have to move as you're looking at at this area right there so i'm going to move so you don't have to take it all the way 
before without seeing the preview so you have to start moving until you're starting to lose out on those textures from the image and when those prominent textures are lost out it simply implies that you are now going to have lost out the overall textures in the image you can see if i talk i zoom i'll pan around by clicking right in the preview you're going to notice that we have lost out on the textures and that is our aim so simply come and hit ok and you're going to notice that the image is now going to be blurry i hope you guys can see that then you're going to come and select the high frequency layer and now activate it by clicking on this bringing back the visibility of the layer and while it is selected here is how is where you have to pay maximum attention rather you have to notice that this is a 16-bit image so you always have to make sure that you know the bit ratio or the bit size of your image so for this case we have a 16-bit image so you have to always have two actions if at all you're using actions to uh, retouch your images because they fasten or quicken the retouching process so for this case we have a 16-bit image so i want to show you guys why you always have to apply a given frequency separation action on a given image according to uh, the bit size of the image because when you apply the settings for an 8-bit image on a 16-bit image you're not going to be having those are nice results and nice textures out of your images when you do retouch them using frequency separation so after you have selected the high frequency layer come to image and come to apply image so when you come to apply image you're going to get this window showing i'm just going to move this slightly down and when it starts showing if at all you have an 8-bit image, always make sure that you select the low frequency layer or the layer that is containing your colors and the skin tones under the layer option. So for this case, you have to come and choose the low frequency layer because this layer is containing the colors and the skin tones of this image. So come and always make sure that your previous on. So for an 8-bit image, come and change the blending mode to subtract. And make sure the opacity is 100, the scale is 2, offset 128, and make sure your preserve transparency and mask are not checked or selected. And you can come and click OK. So always make sure for an 8-bit image you don't have the invert option checked. So if at all you have a 16-bit image like we do have right here, I hope you can see these values. You have to come and select the low frequency layer and change the blending mode from subtract to add. Make sure your opacity is 100 and the scale is 2 and offset 0. And always come and check or invert uh, this. Make sure you check this option. And when you do that, you're going to notice that your textures are on this gray kind of layer. And uh, that means that this layer is going to be containing only the textures all the outlines and the details in the image so simply click ok and come to the blending mode and change it from normal and come and select linear light like that so i want to put these two in a group and hit ctrl or command g after selecting both and then you're going to name that frequency separation so when we turn this on and off you're going to notice that there's no difference between the image and the frequency separation group so I'm just going to open this. So if at all you have the action, it is going to be automatically doing for you everything. And I'm going to be elaborating like that for you guys even more later on in this tutorial. And sharing the trick for getting the best natural textures in the skin of your images. So since we are dealing with skin, skin tones, yeah, we want to even out the skin tones using the Gaussian blur method. So I'm going to come and select the layer that is containing the uh, skin tones in the image. And for this case, it is the low frequency layer. Then come to the lasso tool, but always make sure that for whichever tool you're using, turn off the caps lock key to get the tool back visible. So when you select the lasso tool, I hope you can see where the lasso tool is. You can now come to the feathering and choose a feathering between 22 and 24 pixels but for this case i'm going to be using uh this 
22 pixels and alias is checked or marked so you're selected on the low frequency layer now you can zoom in slightly and start making a selection on the skin area uh, just uh, like this so when you're selecting the skin always make sure that you only select the skin area and you keep away from selecting maybe the jewelry the eyebrows and the hair for the model only select the skin and you have to keep away from the outlines or borders of the image just remain within the skin area because when you select close to the jewelry it is going to sample this color and apply it on the skin which we don't want so after making that selection come back to filter and come to blur then come to gush and blur so when you come to gush and blur it is going to bring back the radius we used when we are creating or blurring out the textures from this layer so we use this radius so always make sure that you start from this radius and move towards the right hand side until you start feeling uh, that you're having a nice skin texture out of your image so and for this case I'm going to go with a radius of around 18 so you don't have to cram these digits still because these digits are going to be differing on how much detail you have in the image and uh, the textures you feel like retaining right in your image so after doing so you can now come and click ok so you want to apply the effect onto the rest of the image so we're going to come right here and you're going to select and right click and click on Gaussian blur to apply the effect you can zoom in by clicking Ctrl or Command Plus and now come and apply the effect so the one drawing my shapes I'm not just a drawing an overall shape on a given area I'm just drawing small small shapes it is more of sculpting you can see right click and click on Gaussian blur and if at all you feel the effect is too much on a given area you can simply click shift command F or shift control F and you can reduce on the effect in that particular area so you can just come and now apply it right here like that right click and click on Gaussian blur and you so the issue I always have with people that use this method is because when they come to the nose area they just want to select the overall nose like this and come and apply the effect so when you do this you're going to notice that the nose is going to be are flattened and you have lost out on the beautiful highlight and the shadows in the image so what I would prefer is I'm going to undo this come and make a selection on the shadow area of the nose like that right click and click on Gaussian blur and you can see that it is really applying a nice effect so come right click and click on Gaussian blur and when you're done applying it on the shadow area of the nose you can simply come if at all you want to apply it on the highlight so make a selection on the highlight and right click and click on Gaussian blur but when you do that it's going to be too much so come to you can simply right click on this option or you can click shift ctrl f or shift command f and just reduce on the opacity of the effect on that particular area and you're going to have nice results so just click on the side to deselect or you can hit ctrl or command d and it is going to be deselecting so you can see the before after before after we have we are now retaining the textures i hope you guys can see them uh, the original textures are still retained in this image so here i'm going to be sharing with you guys an action and a trick i always use to have nice and natural skin textures in all my images I'm going to delete this because I just wanted to elaborate for you guys how the frequency separation basically works. I'm going to come under my actions. So since I have the 16-bit image, I'm going to play an action for the 16-bit image. So I'm going to come right down here and I'm going to select my 16-bit action. So after selecting it, I'm going to hit play and it's going to bring me right here where I have to choose the amount of textures I want to uh, blur out for the low frequency like you can see it is selected so come and start moving 
So for this case, we used a radius of 6. And you're going to click OK. And when it is done playing, usually I put a black and white for my actions because I use the mixer brush tool first to even out the skin tones. But this is more of a lasso tool and gush and blur radius uh, tutorial. I'm going to close this and I'm going to select the low frequency layer. So here is where I have shared with you guys my tip. Sorry, my tip for having natural skin textures. So come and select the skin area. So when you come back to filter and come back to blur and come to gush and blur, you don't have to move this towards the right hand side. So what I found out is when you multiply this radius by three, you're going to get the best skin texture from every single image you're retouching. So when I multiply six by three, I'll be having the best skin textures and that texture is going to be looking really natural as possible. So for whichever radius you may have used when your action or when you're blurring out the textures from the low frequency layer, just multiply it by three. And for this case, six times three, you get 18 and you're going to be seeing the textures are really natural they're going to apply sorry so we're going to apply the effect onto the rest of the image like that so make shapes the way light is falling on a particular area to uh, apply or get the best out of your results just don't make a full selection just go on drawing those tiny uh, shapes like that and come to the nose area and just apply the effect right there so right click and click on gaussian blur and also come to uh, this side and apply the gaussian blur i hope you're seeing uh, the effect or the results if at all i turn this on and off you can see uh, the results and we are still having the best or the same natural skin textures in the image and you have not lost out on the textures in this image so this is how you choose the best radius for your gush and blur for skin retouching using frequency separation in photoshop and if at all you have learned something new from this video don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if at all you're watching this video from this channel for the very first time ronix from ronix photography don't forget to keep practicing and keep creating if at all you want to be a good retoucher or photographer out there and i'll see you in the next one